our guest scientist for the evening is Dr. Jeffrey Silverman. Come on out. Woo! Hello, Jeffrey. I don't like that his shirt is louder than mine. <laughs> it's louder than yours? For, for all the non-woke people, what does louder than mine mean? Uh, uh, visually deafening. That sounds about right. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Very good. It definitely all right, is. I'm, I'm woke now. All right, so Jeff, all right, this is quite an awesome background. Uh, data scientist at Samba TV currently to see how many people are watching Westworld and Game of Thrones. Uh, former astrophysics researcher at the University of Texas at Austin and earned his PhD at UC Berkeley uh, studying supernovas and dark energy. And he also believes, actually, Kevin, you want to tell uh, us about this uh, one? Those that men who receive Brazilian waxes should be called Rio de Nojeros. <laughs> sure, seems reasonable. Yeah. Dude, okay. at what point did you get bored with astrophysics? <laughs> uh, when I couldn't keep a job for more than a couple of years, you have to move all over the country and the funding is terrible. I'm oh, sorry, man. Did you like space out on the job? Uh, oh! Oh, he just nailed it right he's there. Nailing it already. Hit that one out. Keeping score of the space puns. Let's do it. I like wow. it. Wow. Oh, out of the keep solar up. system, that one. But uh, you, you do actually have, look at those. You have Samba, Samba TV. Samba TV shoes. There we go. The wow. The, so no, no astrophysics department said, hey, we're going to give you your own sneakers. Yeah, the swag is way better in the way tech industry. In the tech industry. <laughs> this is so good. All right. And the, he's got an astrophysics shirt, data science shoes. This is awesome. All right. So <laughs> let's... Um, so maybe we start before we jump right into the questions that we'll ask you guys for fun prizes. Um, Okay, what has been maybe one of the most profound things that you've learned with your research on supernovas? And we'll probably get into this a little bit, but then, and how does that maybe relate to what you're learning at Samba TV, finding these unique insights about viewing? Yeah, so uh, we'll get a little bit more into to what these exploding stars are, but I spent many years uh, observing them using some of the biggest telescopes on the planet to see these uh, exploding stars, discover them, classify them, figure out what makes them explode and why they're interesting. And we'll go into that a bit more uh, later as well. And so some of the things that I did was I got to be the first human to see some of these exploding stars. We discovered them, classified them, things like that. So and animals saw them before. So possibly animals. Okay. So I, I qualify humans because, you know, maybe aliens on other okay. planets could have seen them. Okay. Right. A raccoon went know. to the telescope yeah. when no one was <laughs> Recorded looking. Recorded gorillas are like, this is interesting. That's right. The dolphins are like, oh, these guys know what the hell they're doing, right? And you're the first. That's right. <laughs> are you fully human? Is that? Uh, I think so. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything named after you in the sky? Uh, so, not officially. Uh, Unofficially, people name shit whatever they want. So, uh -huh. anything from Simpsons and South Park characters to dinosaurs, different groups have different naming conventions. Okay, so is there something out there called, like, Jeff's Nipple? <laughs> That'd be interesting. Not that I know of, but good. I have friends that would probably do that. So. Okay. <laughs> Next to Orion is Jeff's Dangling Nipple. Yep. <laughs> also known as 5XC32. Okay, good to know. All right, so... Let's go into our questions for the evening. So you guys, don't be shy. We're going to have you raise your hand. We'll bring the mic up to you, and you can answer his questions for fun prizes. All right. You read them off, Jeff. All right. So when will the sun explode as a supernova? All right. What do we think? Do you guys have any thoughts, comedians? Mm -hmm. uh, about five years before our when, when it's done being a Chevy Nova. Chevy Nova. Nice. Okay, there we go. Um, the Bible says that Jesus will return before that happens. <laughs> also a solid, solid guess. Solid yes. guess. <laughs> All right, we had. I think we had an answer up here. Yeah. When it runs out of hydrogen to burn. When it runs out of hydrogen to burn is a good guess. Not quite, but you're on the right track. All right, hold on. We have an answer in the front. Hey, man, this dude this is weird, though, because he has my same running never? shoes. Uh -huh. Is never possibly? Never. Eureka! Eureka! Oh. Woo! Come on up. Come on up, sir. That's pretty exciting. And what's your name? Uh, Patrick. And how did you know that answer? Because uh, I read a book on cosmo cosmology. Yeah. Okay, you weren't sure it was Cosmos, maybe? It was <laughs> making drinks? Well, was it a... Yeah. yeah, I read that one a little bit later in life. Was it a trick question? Like, it's not going to explode, it's going to implode? Uh, That's a good question. We'll get to it. We'll get to yeah, it. Oh, my bad. You, you Was that question two? A space visual encyclopedia. Oh! So now you can be even more of a nerd about space. <laughs> Give it yeah. up, Patrick. Good job. Hey, but seriously, he has my same running shoes. That's crazy. 
Kanye also says never, as you notice. That's right. There you go. So Ka Kanye and the gentleman up front are both correct. Both correct. Kanye yeah. is always right. I mean, obviously. Uh, so yeah, I started off with a, a bit propaganda. of a trick question because I'm an asshole like that. Uh, <laughs> so the sun will never explode as a supernova. It will eventually run out of hydrogen, but it'll kind of just kind of fade away. Uh, the two main ways to get a supernova, the two main kinds, we have a type 1A on the left. That's where a sun-like star kind of eventually burns out, but it has a partner star and can steal material from it. It gets too big and it'll collapse on itself. It's almost like an alpha male. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I talk about this, you know, the sun... That's a good metaphor, you guys. Is, yeah, <laughs> stealing... Probably bad to use at a science show. But <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. I think they're feeling you. So, yeah, our sun does not have a partner. It's decided to, you know, live a single life. Oh, my God, like me. Uh, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> You'll never die out either. Oh, yeah, <laughs> great. Cheers. So, so and, and just to clarify, um, it's uh, two-thirds of the stars in our Milky Way are single stars, and about one-third are either binary or multiple star systems. Yeah, yeah, those numbers change depending on the, the day of the week <laughs> and who you talk to, but somewhere between half and a third of stars, uh, yeah, have partners, and, and the others yeah, are, yeah. are alone. And so, and so um, type 1A is specifically with a partner star? Yes. Okay. You, need a, you need a partner star for that type 1A. The other uh, main type that I have up here, the type 2, these are the much more massive stars, maybe 10 times the mass of the sun or bigger. When they run out of fuel at the end of their life, they will actually implode, collapse on themselves, and then explode out as a supernova. So those are our two main flavors. And, and so you're saying that the reason why our star will not supernova is because of the mass. The mass is not large enough. That's right, exactly. Okay. And... Um, <clears throat> a majority of the stars in the galaxy will supernova or will not? Will not. It's very rare to have a star as big as eight or ten times the mass of the sun. So these are pretty rare kinds of stars that are going to do this. Um, but uh, we'll talk a little bit later about uh, they do happen and we do see them. Cool, cool. All right. All right. Other, uh, do you have other thoughts? I'm learning so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just question one. We got <laughs> nine more to go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> what about what about a, uh, like a star getting sucked into a black hole? Uh, so that's not quite a supernova, but we can see those. Sometimes when a, a star gets sucked into a black hole, it gets shredded, and that will actually release a bunch of energy and light, and we can actually detect those. We've seen maybe about a dozen or two dozen of those ever. What's the male metaphor for that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's just a song by Soundgarden. Okay. I think it's marriage. No, I'm joking. Whoa. <laughs> a bad marriage. Yeah, yeah. Well, you may be single. You may be uh, type two for I'm type one A for a long time. <laughs> Quick, uh, this is. I, I was reading about this. So when a star supernovas, uh, the part of the particulate, the material that it shoots out, goes at about 10 percent the speed of light. Mm -hmm. That's really fast. Yeah, yeah. These are hugely powerful, energetic explosions. Uh, the amount of light that they'll output in a month is what the sun will output in its entire 10 billion year lifetime. Wow. Uh, the stuff Holy blasting cow. out is moving 10% the speed of light. Um, the Bible says that the Earth is only <laughs> like 4,000 years old. What do you think of that? I think that's a great story and would make astronomy real boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, j j uh, just to clarify, uh, you, so you said that... Um, uh, wait, what did you say before the uh, super ten percent speed of light? You said that oh, the, the amount of like okay, yes. light coming out of a supernova. In, in well, the amount of light coming out of a supernova is in one month mm -hmm. is more than from our smaller star throughout its whole life. That's right. Yeah, there's so much energy and light released in this very short explosion that it dwarfs what our sun will do over its ten billion year life. That's time. crazy. Where's do we have a supernova that's I mean, at least a star that's maybe approaching supernova that's close to us that I can maybe check out on my lunch break at the Barcadero, perhaps. If it's yeah, like it would have to happen at your 2 a.m. break. Yeah, no, not at 2 a.m. break. At night would be a little bit better, but uh, also no, not at the Barcadero. You'd I have to be at Yosemite. But can you see it during the day if it, if it was close enough? Uh, so uh, a couple parts of your question. Uh, there's a very bright nearby star called Betelgeuse. Oh. Where the how how close is that one? Uh, a couple hundred couple light hundred years, layers. if I remember correctly off the top of my head. Something like that, a few hundred light years. Uh, but yeah, in the constellation of Orion, it's a red giant. Even from the Embarcadero in the evenings in the winter, if Carl's not around and blocking the sky, you can easily see this bright Fuck Fucking Carl. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Carl's the name a of a large fog. man fog. with a wispy beard. Um, so you could possibly see it. You, you, so you could definitely see the star, and it will go supernova at some point. So and the flatness of the Earth doesn't have any effect on <laughs> much much to the dismay of some nba stars is the earth flat like did we figure it out like is yes, it, it is it's flat. still you flat didn't, you didn't see the tweet no it's flat <laughs> okay at potus sent one out yeah. the earth is confirmed not i'm a little flat. behind and so this this uh 
this close star, this, this Beetlejuice, it, was, it must have been like discovered in what, the late what, 80s, early 90s? When did that movie come out? <laughs> right? Uh, it, it must have been. The, the it wasn't discovered like in 1970. Like, I have a vision. There'll be both a star supernova, e, e, supernova, and there will be a movie starring, anyway. Michael Keaton. And a a shoplifter. And super oh, went on a rider. You're right. Well, she did more, she did other things too. Right. Did so she though? Did, did she? she? I think she only stole. A She's watch. done some Stranger Things. Oh. Oh. oh, very well done. Very well done. Bringing it back to the TV. Where's the camera? Camera three. <laughs> there it is. To piggyback on what Kevin was saying about the proximity of supernovas, if if one did go supernova within just a couple tens of light years away, it would drastically affect the Earth and our atmosphere. Yeah, within a few light years or maybe ten light years, it would certainly damage satellites. It could actually, you know, destroy the the ozone layer, the atmosphere. There are no stars that close that are going to do it. Betelgeuse is one of, if not the closest okay. star that will go supernova. It'll be bright, but it will not Who killed you know, us? Melt Betelgeuse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it will not melt your face like uh, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark style. Okay. So. I had no idea there was this whole study. When you study supernovas, you know, I pretty much thought that you were observing the night sky and hoping to see an increase in brightness, of severe brightness, and the, the computer algorithms would send you a text and be like, wake up, go look. Um, or then you'd watch it and over again that was recorded. But then I saw this whole stellar taxonomy, this whole classification system of this type 1A and this type 2s, and then there's a 3 and a Four and a five two. What is all of this craziness? Like uh, that one makes sense. This one's massive, right? There's a diff, and then this one's a binary star. But like, what is three and four and five? I don't even understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> what's so, what's happening right now? <laughs> this is like when when like you go to get your car fixed, and then the dude's like <laughs> trying to tell you, like, hey, hey, and then the carburetor. Uh, in your mind, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but your that face is. Yeah, that'll sure. be four hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would have stuck in astronomy if I could just tell you something and charge you four hundred bucks. But uh, so this, yeah, this taxonomy thing. Astronomers tend to be really bad at. Uh, they'll just see something new and just give it a name. Usually a boring ass one like two or one a. Uh, before they understand anything about it. So there are type three, four, and fives. They're not really. <laughs> That's what we used did with anymore. like poop and pee. That's exactly <laughs> what we did. Yeah. I'm sorry. To come on in. Come on in. Take a seat. You can come on in. Yeah, come on. Head on up. There's plenty of seats up on the left and on the We're right. We're sure you already know about supernovas and bio. Yeah. Bi bi binary stars, right? You guys are already caught I'll up. I'll fill on you that in. Shit. <laughs> Uh, oddly Actually, enough, he is an astrophysicist who studies supernovas. Fucking knew it. Oh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you know the Earth wasn't flat? <laughs> yeah, that's what I've learned. Back to the show. <laughs> so yeah, they what's the three, four, and five? So what is this I stuff? honestly don't remember what the three, four, and five. Those those were used in like the 40s oh, okay. or so for a while, okay. and then they fell out of fashion. What we do use, you notice the one A and yeah. the two. We also have a one B, a one C, a two B, a two L, a two A. So like, what's a one B and a one C? Which ones so, are the most common ones? Uh, the most common are the two, generic mm -hmm. kind of two. Uh, the different classifications are dependent on how quickly they get bright and fade away, uh, what kind of elements they have. The twos have a lot of hydrogen. The ones don't have hydrogen. So that's sort of what mm. we figured out why we name these things differently. And then it took decades to figure out what the hell actually made that difference. Hydrogen's so H. Hydrogen is indeed H. Helium's so H-E. That's right. I know mm. this isn't right. C is not calcium. Nope. <laughs> Keep yeah, going, keep going. Yeah, you're doing pretty, you're this doing, is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, no, good. I just knew C wasn't calcium. <laughs> that is accurate. You got two more than I thought you would. When are we gonna When are we gonna talk about Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there. I know you're, okay, you're waiting for that. This is confusing. Let's okay, let's do it. Question All right, on we go. Closer to the Game of Thrones question. All right, who discovered the most recent naked eye, which means seen without a telescope, or you know, naked eyes? You can figure out what that means yourself. Uh, supernova in our own Milky Way galaxy. It was either um, Winona Ryder. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, was a good um, default answer. Just it was either Daryl Hall or uh, something else, right? Something else. <laughs> His private eye was watching. Listen, yeah. I yeah. discovered the first supernova. <laughs> supernova. Oh, uh, who's, who's the dude think? before uh, okay. Neil deGrasse? Carl Sagan? Carl Sagan. <laughs> that dude. I Fuck like yeah. how he says Neil deGrasse. Wait, is, am I cheating by answering this? You get one. You get one, Gotham. What, uh, Tycho? Oh. Uh, and you did not get it right. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to give it. Because otherwise I'm just giving you a Kepler. Apparently he, not an astrophysicist. You had so much confidence. Are you astrophysicist? You got that wrong? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nailing them, buddy. Was it you? 
It was not me, unfortunately. Oh, that would have been pretty badass, Ew. though. Astrophysipist. That's a t-shirt in the making right there. Uh, I'm an astrophysicist. Yeah. That should go on our shirts. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a good one. 10% I'm, fee. That's, that's a good all one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I miss the eclipse, and I'm astrophysicist. Kepler? Eureka! Yeah. Eureka! Yeah. Woo! Come on up. Come on up. Excellent. That dude's so well known, you only have to know his last now, name. Now, no, <laughs> Kettler. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. What, what is your name? Abby. Abby. Now, I'm going to ask you how you knew that, though I did hear that your pitch raised <laughs> up when you said Kepler, so maybe, maybe it was a guess. <laughs> well, how, how did you come to that answer? <laughs> it's the name of our dog. Okay. Oh, my God. The name of the dog. <laughs> we named yes. the dog Kettler. Kettler. <laughs> First name, it's Johannes. Is that yeah. the name of your cat? No. <laughs> okay. Do you have any other pets? No. Do you name anything else in your household after dead astronomers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. I is it is it it's R rated? It's a sex position. <laughs> <laughs> Spread them and do the Galileo again, honey. <laughs> I'm gonna burn at this stake. Okay. Oh. Take off your Orion's belt. <laughs> also a historian. Oh okay. We have a lot of things. That are amazing. Well then. You can learn more about Kepler in this book about Kepler. Give her a round nice. of applause. Woo! It's really just about your dog. There you go. Excellent. Do you 50 read shades, for fun? <laughs> 50 Shades of Grey Matter over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's knocking him out of the park. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, there's Kepler. So Kepler, 1604, uh, discovered the most recent visible uh, to the naked eye supernova. Uh, Tycho Brahe, his advisor, discovered one a little bit before uh, Kepler. But since then, all the uh, supernova that have been discovered, we've used telescopes. Telescope was invented right around this time. Since then, we could see a lot more with telescopes. 15, did they say by Jove? Uh, that, that I mean, he's German, so I don't know what the German for that is. <laughs> but. Deutsches Wunderbar. <laughs> sure, it sounds good to me. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. I got a candy bar for saying that in high school. Oh, good, yeah. I <laughs> okay. What I, did you go to Willy Wonka school? Where did you go to school? I went to a Christian high school. Okay. <laughs> that explains the Jesus that question. That explains a lot of we, They don't teach this. They're like, God loves you. You don't need to know anything else. Here's a candy yeah. bar. <laughs> She's excited about the Game of Thrones. She thinks, thinks that's factual. Yeah. She has yeah. I was like, oh my God, what is sex? Wow. Uh, N near, my, near my apartment, there's a Christian uh, science uh, bookstore. It's pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lie. Broadway and Ninth. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Look at all the books you can't read. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. This is that's a good relationship goal to name your animals and children after dead scientists. <laughs> and children. Yeah, and children. And yeah, 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 yeah. Kepler's dead. He's been dead for a long time. All right. Um, all right, w and actually, Kepler is also famous for, you know, the, well, obviously, we have the Kepler telescope that's named after Kepler, and that has made lots of discoveries in um, using uh, transit photometry, which is uh, what we use to observe uh, planets orbiting stars that are really far away, ex exoplanets. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Kepler method is that process of observing it. And, uh, yeah, Kepler was a mathematician, geometer, and, and astrophysicist, so he figured out uh, the laws of planetary motion before Newton got a hold of figuring out the law of gravity. So, you know, he was a smart dude, did a lot of stuff, was considered, you know, uh, one of the best mathematicians at the time. Well, uh, quick question. So, he saw it with his naked eye. Yep. And he was specifically looking for it? Uh, so, back in the day, they would just kind of stare up and measure the stars as they were, and he, he noticed said a new one. his scientific method, and from what I understand, he was just... Yo, like, <laughs> that's a great pretty scientific much. method I mean, to be that, named that, was, that was the method of the time, pretty time, much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, that means anybody looking up there saw it as well. Sure. He was the, so all, yeah. Okay, so this is not this even with, true. It's Kepler and he, all his freaking He wrote homies. it down first, so he gets credit. Oh. So, yeah. Have you ever been, like, really drunk and looked at this guy and it's like, woo, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a self-induced supernova. <laughs> I think you get something from a guy in I've the mission. I've definitely seen lights in the sky various times. So wait, uh, that was, was also chemically induced, I believe. Real follow-up question: Was the supernova still there? Because then you could, I could just be like, "Yeah, I saw a supernova too." <laughs> so it lasted. It was visible from Earth for uh, months. Uh, okay. So, right, that so makes basically, sense. everybody saw the supernova. Pretty much. And for he it. saw it first. It, a type two goes for months, or a type one A goes for months. 
Sort of depends. They both typically go for a, a month or two or so and then kind of fade away, but it varies star so, to so, star. So why don't we have, or do we have, uh, scientists that are constantly telling us, hey, yo, go look at this area of the night sky. There's a supernova. So there are all over the night sky. It's just they're way, way, way faint. So you're not going to oh, be able to see them super, with naked eye. Oh, they're super, duper Oh, you Even can't with see with naked eye. No, we yeah, haven't yeah. seen a naked eye supernova since 1987. Shit, you can't even oh. see oh. stars in cities. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, There's <laughs> also that. So the, 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 since it's been 30 years since we've seen a naked eye supernova? That's right. Oh, and wow. I believe before that might have been this one uh, or close oh, to it. Oh, crap. So they are very rare. Even oh. through backyard decent-sized telescopes, there's only oh. one every well, few years. Well, so that makes sense. So then you only have to look at... Uh, the sc the sky every like month really and if you or every even if you go every week or whatever back then because uh, you have more time to to do stuff like that and yeah but but did Kepler know that it was a supernova or just like shit this star is not leaving it's not going <laughs> to it. How so does he know what that why, phenomenon Why do you was? think they had more time back then? That's insane. They don't have to pay their rent. They're not watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> no Game of Thrones? <laughs> true. I watched 60 OMG, hours in six just weeks. just saw something in the sky. Yeah. Gonna call it hashtag supernova. <laughs> At Kepler. So, <laughs> so the name supernova comes from nova, the Latin word for new, and that's how yeah. they described it. A new star in I the sky. Yeah. And they're like, holy crap, what the hell is this? It's a new star. That's bizarre. Right. And then it takes us 300 some odd more years to figure out what the hell is that new okay. star. Uh, Even yeah. with telescopes, we're only seeing these every couple weeks, you said? Or? So we're seeing a lot more now. The ones that you could see in you know, a backyard telescope that you know, your neighbor might have, those are pretty rare every few years. Every few years. But you know, okay. some of the biggest telescopes in the world are looking for these things every single night. Yeah. And we find a lot more. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Let's move on to the next question. All right, so speaking of that, uh, each Earth Day, I gotta be specific about what day I'm talking about as an uh, astronomer. Each Earth Day, about how many supernova go off in the entire visible universe? What do you, what do you guys think? D don't What's jump Earth out day? so soon. Uh, every time a 40-year-old dude plays a champagne supernova thing at <laughs> karaoke, I don't fucking you know. know. 20. You know. 20. I feel like there's 20. a lot of those going on around. <laughs> d d d does the Kepler couple know? <laughs> We're just here for the books. Hold on, we, yeah, do we have an answer, or was that a stretch? All right, hold on. Yeah, you can guess. A million. A million. That's pretty That's close. I think we'll call it a Eureka. Has I think we'll call it a Eureka. It to yeah. Eureka, woo! Eureka, come on down. Good guess. Good guess. I feel like he overbidded me by a lot there. Did you bite your like, pinky guess? when you said that? A million. What's your name? Do you study astronomy or? A little. A little? <laughs> All right, okay. And did you, did you, you just want to grab what's he in my He just wants hand. it and he's <laughs> going to go. I'm just like, he's trying to grab my package for Christ's sake. This, like to, yeah, to help you discover more. <laughs> yeah, we're both going to let that go? That's <laughs> oh, my God, this little telescope and not, that's the wrong way, but you know, whatever way it works for you. <laughs> no, um, he's just, that's why he's saying. Telescope he's and studies it a little bit. Your own supernova. Here's my package, that's the wrong way. Sure. Yeah, you yeah. You have a question? Come, come, come so we can, the stage face Right now, there, everyone's just, just Learning about your butt. Okay. Okay. So, Speaking to the mic. Yeah. So my question is, what was it like the first time you saw one through a telescope? Oh, well, me, the first time I saw one through a telescope. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean it is an intellectual I mean, orgasm. I had, I had seen pictures of them online beforehand, <laughs> but it's not the same as when you see I it in real life. I sent one via Snapchat. Oh Still talking about supernovas, guys. <laughs> uh, they, well, are, they are bright points of light, so it's not that exciting, but it means a lot. It's very cool. It was special. It, yes. was, a it was a special time. It was a little awkward. I didn't quite know what I was doing with the telescope, but it worked. It's a good question. Give a round of applause. Woo! It was crazy. The door wouldn't lock. Your <laughs> mom, <laughs> mom was still home. Was like, All right. <laughs> doing homework. <laughs> so this seems like it's a, a ballpark uh, Yes. It is, it is rounded, yes. It's uh, rounded. So, so I've had conversations, I kid you not, on Facebook about this topic. Uh, most astronomers I've talked to will say that about 10 ex stars explode every second somewhere in the universe. So you multiply that for the day, it's 864,000. So oh, yeah, that's why that number looked familiar. <laughs> it's num yeah. yeah, it's because 10 it's times like 86, the number of seconds. Because it's like 86,000 seconds in a day. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's 10 times the number of seconds in a day. About 10 stars explode somewhere in the visible universe each day, or each um, second. Uh, we Earth don't see days. the vast majority of those. They're just Earth way days. too far away. Earth day, right. They're well, way too far away, they're way too faint, so we don't 
actually see most of those, but we can figure out about how many there are going off. How did you figure out about how many are going off is 10 per second? Uh, so you can use different size telescopes, different telescopes around the world. People have been doing this for sort of 30 or 40 years now, and every night you look at some part of the sky or you stare at one part of the sky for a long time, and you assume, well, that part of the sky is probably typical for everywhere else, and then you can kind of scale up. You multiply, all right, that many little pieces of the sky, and then you can multiply it out from there. And there's many different methods of doing that. And that's why there's sort of this ballpark number. But about 10 per second is what we think. And so do you, what do you learn from each you know, individual different supernova? How is it you know, any different than saying just looking at another rock? I see another rock. I mean, they're all supernovas. You know, obviously, there's different types. But out of all those, how much differentiation do you see? How, how much do you learn? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, sort of. Sometimes people will study really weird ones that don't belong. They look very different. It's a really weirdly shaped rock okay. and a really weird supernova, and that might tell us something interesting. And then there's a lot that are just hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands that kind of look the same. But when you build up that many observations of kind of the same thing, you can do statistics. You can say, well, some are a little brighter, some are a little fainter, but the average is this. Mm -hmm. And the average mm -hmm. amount Inches. of material is this. And so by building up that many, many observations, you can really get at what is the typical supernova, what's the science behind it, what causes the little bit of variations. And that's really where Getting, not to get ahead of myself, data science techniques come in. You have big loads of data trying to sift through it and find out what do they mean, what are they telling us. Did you breathe when you said that? A little bit. Was that one <laughs> breath? <laughs> that was one. That was my so family's cool. from New York, so I speak quickly and don't breathe when I talk. So. Okay. Oh, my God. Well, mine's from New Jersey. Hi. <laughs> Hi. All right, all right. What's up? Yeah. Does That's everyone want to represent right now? <laughs> <laughs> Yell out your area code. Yeah, oh, yeah, one, two, five. Yeah, what's up? Um, that's great. Where are you from, New Jersey? This is my crowd work. Oh, really? Okay, that's, uh, great. that's amazing. Uh, okay, I'm going to sit down now. Uh, amazing. It's not my show. <laughs> so, okay, okay. So, so just one look up at one patch of the sky, like Kepler uh, looked at one patch of the sky. And we look there, and we see that there are a certain amount of supernovas that happen in a day. And then we say, OK, well, we looked at probably 1,000th of the sky, or 1,000th of the sky. And then we'd multiply it. And then we say, yeah, it's about that. That's basically what you do. And you do it a bunch <laughs> of times in a bunch of different ways, and you all sort of get the right same number. OK, OK, got it. And so because it's been done a bunch of times by a bunch of different science, OK, all right, all right. All right. Then it's science. All right. <laughs> All right, you let me off the hook for that one. Good, great. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, awesome. Let's uh, go on to the, this is a crazy number, but it just nuts. blows my, yeah, yeah, it's nuts. What? 10 per second, what? But in what? our galaxy then is much, much less. In our in galaxy is probably what, like 10 per? In our galaxy, per we average per one per 100 years. Oh yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> So there are a hell of a lot of galaxies out there to go from one per 100 years to that number per day. Oh, yeah, I forgot Whoa. we're a different galaxy than <laughs> the rest of the universe. <laughs> and, and just for, for perspective, just how many stars are out there? There's 200 billion in I, our galaxy. And yeah, then a few hundred billion in the Milky Way galaxy. There's maybe a few hundred billion Milky Way light galaxies around. And we're including the ones take. on your shirt here, too? There's <laughs> we're what, not, no, 10 we'll million add, there. We'll add a few hundred more. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what is it, like 10 to like the 30th or something? Uh, it's not a pronounceable number. I mean, it's 100 billion, 100 billion or so ballpark. There you go. <laughs> trillion, yeah. trillion-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so only one per 100 years in the Milky in Way? In the Milky Way galaxy, That's yep. That's crazy. Do we lose any when we gain? Oh yeah, that was a question. It was like, uh, there was a, like a Quora question about uh, how many stars die and are birthed per mm. day too. So yeah, so supernova as far as a little Planned Parenthood question. Yeah, yeah, dying, <laughs> dying stars. It's one per hundred years. Uh, as far as stars being born, it's about one star or two stars per year. So we have a lot more wow. being born than oh, really? explode as supernovas. I feel a lot wow. less bad about that number. Like, yeah, kill them. Kill them all at God's Kill them all, goddamn. <laughs> we lost an audience member. We gained an audience there member. There you go, yeah. stars. You <laughs> same guy. <laughs> So, Does the same star ever come back, like Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> I like the Jesus questions. Uh, I, I don't know. That's a great one. You should ask your, uh, your, Bible. your teachers. Uh, yeah. ask, ask your pastor. Catholic school teachers. Absolutely. Is, is, uh, two, so you said one per day is born? or how uh, One per year. About one, one per, oh, year, one one per, per okay. year. 
So a hundred more are uh, born than die. Yeah, per, okay. about that. Okay. Um, well, no. Uh, yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's and then, correct. And then that related to our population is that's much more. I mean, our population is much less. We we're closer to our uh, birth and death rate that are equal than the galaxy is. The galaxy is obviously birthing way more. Because uh, oh, say that again. <laughs> oh, so global population wise. Oh, oh yeah. on the Earth. Yeah, on the oh. Earth. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We're we're destroying the planet. I don't know. About that. <laughs> Should we stop having children? That's, that's for you and your Lord and Savior to figure <laughs> out. It's not like different marketing. K- like kids are born like kids are born like this quickly, and then they die like that. So it's like it's like. So you're saying we need to speed up the kids' death. <laughs> okay, like adults. I gotta raise the beast per minutes okay. on the deaths yeah. there. You know what I mean? This sounds like the worst. Meshes, bitch. The worst Planned Parenthood like you know infomercial or you know commercial I've ever seen. Okay, you so maybe might go supernova, but the thing is, okay. So, okay, one die in our galaxy every hundred years, and about one is born every year. That's er, right. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, right. Okay, cool. All right. That's crazy. Still crazy. All right, question number four. All right. Uh, the universe's energy and mass are mostly in the form of what? All right, hold on. We have an answer back Someone here. There's an answer. Someone confidently raises their hand. Is, is it dark matter? It is not dark oh. matter. Oh. Somebody hasn't uh, answered before. Is it uh, Carbon? It is not, not carbon, carbon, but that is what C stands for, so nice. bring it back around. Yeah. She's got her hand up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Down here. Yeah. We're good. Miss Leggins. Dark energy. Eureka! 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 <laughs> Come on up. I think I've seen you before. How are you doing? You want to give your name for the audience? Lindsay. And how did you uh, know that answer? I knew it was dark matter or energy, and matter was wrong, so, you know. So, he, so close. You kind of just wait. You, like, you don't raise your hand until there's a couple of wrong answers come up. I was, I was more confident. Process of elimination. Well, you know, dark energy can be scary, so that's why we have got you this book, Defense Against the Dark. It's a Defense Against Dark Magic, made... Written by a witch. Defense against yes, the dark. Yes, this is a field guide to protect yourself. Do you get a tiki torch with that yourself. fucking title? What the fuck? Oh, my God. A field guide to protect yourself from predatory spirits, energy vampires. It's like a Slytherin book. And malevolent book. magic. Energy vampires? Oh, my God. And, yeah, you know, there's a lot of energy vampires out there with all their dark energy. Somebody all are married to them. Hey! Oh. oh. Emily Carlin has been a magical practitioner for more than a decade. She's the great school of wizardry's Dean of Dark Arts, specializing in defensive magic oh and creatures of the night, this teaching magical protection to people of all ages and skill levels. She has a BA in philosophy from Wesley College and a JD from Seattle University School of Law. And she's okay. married to Snape. Yes. So <laughs> enjoy this world. Yo. Yeah. Well, you, How did you know I, I needed this? I had this feeling. That I, there were spirits haunting nice. you. I, I feel round so bad. A round of applause. <laughs> you read the title and her, and her shit, and I was like, oh, fuck you. But then I started to feel bad because like every movie I've seen where the shit she's talking about <laughs> becomes real. There, who, do, who do we have to go get? Yeah. <laughs> fucking, we need an expert on fucking energy vampires. We do. That lady. That's, that's so, probably yeah. my favorite My favorite. Prize I've ever Wait, seen do you, okay. so you believe in <laughs> dark? You believe in darkness? No, I like the Harry Potter movies. Well, though. look, I mean, this is all about the dark side, dark energy, right there. That's oh. the. Uh, there you go. That's right. They got dark, party favors. Dark energy, we can't really see at all, right? <sighs> yeah, that's hence the name. There we go. So yeah, uh, this is and the I makeup hope you of, use it, of the universe. Uh, dark matter makes up a chunk, but not nearly the majority. That's all in this dark energy stuff that's pushing against gravity as the universe expands, pushing galaxies away from each other faster and faster. Dark matter is pulling galaxies uh, within themselves, the stars in galaxies together, holding them together. Uh, They're both called dark because astronomers don't know what the hell they are, and they don't actually give off any light, so we can't see them, but we can infer their existence through how they pull and push on things. And then the little bit there, the 4% and the 1%, that's all stuff you've heard of. Hydrogen, plants, uh, planets, and plants. Uh, stars, people, etc. Okay. So, so there's no like predator lens we can be like, ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> not quite, not quite, sadly. Wait, it's just a guess, essentially. Like you don't. So it's a very educated guess because we can see it. Uh, it af- we can yeah, see its effect. Smell that. We can see What's its effect on things, and so galaxies wouldn't exist without dark matter. Dark energy has to exist for us to see all these supernova that we're uh, 
Is Observe. there dark matter in here? Right now. Do we need the book right now? <laughs> so there are, there are models and people who are saying that there's dark, ener- dark matter flowing sort of everywhere. Not much of it, but around. In humans? Through the solar system. Do they Through wear us? shoes? Possibly. <laughs> Sorry. They control Christmas lights. Spell stuff out. <laughs> Stranger just, Things is such I a good show. I just keep thinking of Stranger Things now. I'm sorry. That's all I'm thinking about. So dark matter is like it. It's like in here. It's like in the air. You, you almost got it. You, you missed just it. Made a try couple of cross signs there. A couple more shots and you'll hit it. You'll <laughs> nail it. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark sound effects right there. <laughs> Guys, I don't read a lot, okay? <laughs> so, no, I do. I just finished Amy Schumer's book. It's so good. Have you Nice. Started? Excellent. Excellent. I've heard good Thank things. You. Thank you. Um, okay, so dark right. energy um, pushes out matter in. Okay. Nice. So, but the, the estimates, like you said, is kind of how do you know that dark energy is more prevalent than dark matter is? So what we can do is we can, by observing uh, the furthest away supernova, the furthest away galaxies, and nearby galaxies, we can calculate basically how much of this energy and and mass and material needs to be there to balance out the stuff we do see. Because galaxies are nice and stable, and they make these nice spiral Mm -hmm. patterns, and they don't Mm -hmm. fly apart. So we can count up all the stars and all the stuff we see, and we know it's basically balanced by something else, and then we can say, okay, well, that's dark matter, what we're calling dark matter. We don't Yo, quite man, know what it is. You're starting to make me really feel like we did land on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's definitely more stable. Has I never yeah. thought, like, just word, it's all the way up there, and just, pss, like, gas, and then uh, you adjust. Like, I, just the math just seemed too ridiculous, but now you make me feel like yeah. some flat earth someone can figure that it totally out. That YouTube you. video is quite real. Uh, are, are, we, are we then saying that dark energy is constantly increasing because it's spreading all the galaxies apart from one another? Or no, is the number stable? So that's actually still a little bit open for interpretation. The data is not quite good enough. It seems like it's constant throughout the universe and throughout time, but there's still enough uncertainty, and we're trying to get more measurements and, and better theories to figure out, is it really constant? Is it changing a little bit with time? Um, being constant with time is nice, it's clean, it's a very simple idea, relatively speaking, of course. Ha ha. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, we, we like that, I like that one personally, but the, the data's not completely in yet, so wait 20 some odd years. What, what, what does that mean, the day's not completely the, in? The data, we don't data. have enough data. observations, I enough good d- enough observations. Not familiar with this word. Have you met Neil deGrasse Tyson? I have a couple times, yeah. Tight. That's how I know about dark matter. There you go. There it is. Or dark energy, sorry. Cosmos episode. Yeah. Does he have a good handshake? Uh, he has a solid handshake, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I think when I see him. Yes, <laughs> that's that's fair. He studies <laughs> Krav Maga. Yeah, <laughs> he will kick you in the balls. So it's crazy that only four percent of everything is stars and planets, and actual matter. Yeah, so that we can know, see the the stuff that you learned about in school, the stuff on the periodic table, and protons and neutrons, all those things make up just well, five, four, yeah, yeah, four yeah. plus one there. So, so the, just the fact that we're trapped in this like human level perspective and looking around, we just think everything's visible all the time, but it's not. The vast majority of the universe is not. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure. Cool, cool. All right, question <laughs> numero cinco. All right, uh, this, one's, this one's deep. This one's deep. This is gonna be a deep cut here. Uh, Aside from supernova, what evidence is there for dark energy? What do you guys think? Dark energy vampires. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Seems like reasonable after the book, yeah. Uh, Vampire Diaries was a good show. This was. Yeah. Yeah, good. I feel like you're talking maybe to yourself. <laughs> yes, <but> possibly. <laughs> I feel like we could step away, leave the room, and you'd be like, my favorite episode of so Game one, of Thrones. One woman show. Was it's all the good. Red Wedding. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like ele- protons, electrons, like when they pass by each other, there's that they're not. You know where I'm going with that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that thing, what I was trying to say. That's yeah. the like when you wake up and you can't breathe. Dark energy. <laughs> all, all up in you. <laughs> <laughs> did Kepler okay. see any dark energy? Kepler Listen. did not see uh, any dark okay. energy. Wait, quick question. Is, when was uh, dark energy and dark matter kind of discovered? Uh, dark matter in sort of the late 60s and the 70s, dark energy in the late 90s. Cool. Could we discover like dark Oh, the something? late 90s. Oh, Lincoln Park. <laughs> I blame Final them. answer. I blame them completely. Final answer, guys. Final answer. All right. Uh, is it the red shift that we see when we when the, we observe the stars that are further away? So that's part of it. That's that's definitely part of the equation here. Uh, that's one of the things that we use with the supernova and and one of the other answers here. 
dang. <laughs> is is that a good enough? Or I think I think we'll have to give it good well, enough. Is, is call it, it, yeah. We'll we'll call this well, one a Eureka. Good Eureka! Oh, okay. Woo! Get up there. Because there's two there's Get two answers there. we're looking. Eureka! All right. I like how he got kind of like a <laughs> not as good. All right. So do you uh do you study space at all? Oh yeah, I look at the sky all the time. Really? And what is your name? Jeremy. Do you really look at the sky all the time, like the night sky? Like every day. Oh, you really? That's amazing. Yeah, okay. okay. Do you consider yourself? That's do you consider yourself? Than some people. A, like a uh, like a nerdish guy. Yeah, I got a really big telescope. Do you really? Okay. <laughs> Euphemism. Included. Where's it pointed? Let's see. I see where this is going. You just need someone to observe it. Is that correct? Of course. All right. <laughs> do you watch like a nerdy show like Big Bang Theory? No. Okay, well, this prize, though, is perfect. I think I found new evidence of dark energy. (laughs) This is a Big Bang Theory pen. Well, I know. I know you totally love it. Too much enthusiasm. Not only, though, is this a regular pen. Just wait. It is, it actually will show you Bazinga. Bazinga. (laughs) That's from the show. So it's projector. And so I, I can tell you this will totally go into your backpack and never be used again. Basic enthusiasm. Would you use that if you're at a cafe? Would you shine, you shine a little bazinga action? Say, hey, look at me. Love Big Bang Theory. Love. No, no. He's got to shine it in the middle of the night when he's right about to. Uh, Calling to attach yourself. You just like <laughs> referencing Sorry, telescopes. What was that? There it is. All right. <laughs> yeah. Give him a round of applause. Woo! There it is for this body. So that's part. That's part of the answer. That's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what, Lars? <laughs> oh, this is. Oh, that's exactly what we were just talking about. That was just his talking telescope about that. Yeah, right there. Uh, yeah, so two, two pieces of evidence that aren't these exploding stars. One, this thing called the cosmic microwave background. This is sort of the glow left over from the Big Bang. Uh, by looking at that, there's evidence for dark energy. And then uh, as the picture... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That, that was... It's okay, really hard so to pay attention. The, the <laughs> Her clit is like wait. Cyclops from the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that's a woman, too. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Team nice. Man. That's coming right out. I love it. There it is. All right. Let's do that. It's weird. <laughs> Look into <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. So before you keep going, okay, sure. uh, cosmic microwave background. Uh, okay. So ev- all the galaxies were closer together. Right. At the beginning of the universe, everything's much closer together. There's this sort of faint glow of light from the Big Bang, from the beginning of the universe. And sort of that imprints some uh, information. And as the universe is expanding, we can observe this glow, this microwave background radiation, this light. And by looking at the very subtle details in it, it gives evidence that there is this dark energy out there. Okay. And then the other one is large-scale structure. And then the other one uh, is large-scale structure. And this one is basically just how galaxies are clumped together on the biggest scales, the entire universe. So if you stare really, really deep in one direction, you see some galaxies clumped here, some clumped there, some clumped there. And how those clump up also gives you a measurement of dark energy. And they all sort of agree on the amount of dark energy that's out there. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. So if the continents were like galaxies and water was like dark energy then it pushed it away Ooh. yeah that, Ooh. that would that would do that, that? would make sense if From water what was pushing the continents away nice then. analogy <laughs> <laughs> if the water you know was if the if water was wasn't the uh, don't take water. this away from me don't take it away from her it, was it definitely enough. is you know they have to put anchors down on islands so they don't float away are you aware of that <laughs> <laughs> puerto Rico's like I where's our anchor <laughs> hurricane just pushed us oh boy so, shouldn't, so that the second thing, large scale structure, so you said like the, uh, when the universe is clump up or don't clump up, shouldn't that be called like pollocking? Pollocking? No art, no, no art people. Okay, here? there right. you go. Yeah, Jackson pollocking. Yeah. Little, little little droplets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can sort of think about it that oh, way. Pollock right. like Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a NASA scientist that worked with Sagan? His last name was Pollock. Uh, right. Possibly. I, th- I don't think um, it was the same dude, but okay. you never know. Um, so <laughs> explain large-scale structure just w- w- one more time. Because the galaxies cl- tend to clump up together, how does that in- how is that an indicator of dark energy? Yeah, so if there was a lot of dark energy pushing galaxies away from each other, you would expect the spaces between them to be Be'd larger. Big. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And if there's not any dark matter or dark energy at all, the galaxies would tend to clump up a lot more. And so by uh-huh. measuring sort of the typical distances between all the galaxies, we can get a measure of how much dark energy there should be. 
And so okay. that's another okay. measure of dark energy. And the amount that we measure from that basically agrees with this microwave background and what we saw from supernova. And supernova were the first line of evidence. These came later. Mm -hmm. And then the only the only galaxy that we are on track on track. On, no, track, track, on track, 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 that we are on track, track to on track. collide with. So we're moving away from all other galaxies except one, and that's Andromeda. So it, most galaxies appear to be moving away from us. Some nearby are kind of moving towards us, but the Andromeda galaxy is our biggest nearest neighbor. They are on a collision course, so the Milky Way and Andromeda will crash into each other in a few billion years. And, and it's actually nothing to be afraid of because of all the space between star systems. Also, we'll like nuke ourselves in like a month or two. So <laughs> okay. I don't think it's That's good to know. <laughs> wow, a boo and an applause. Boo. <laughs> yeah. You want it sooner? Is that it? Yeah. I don't like he's so smart that that's probably yeah. a good estimate and shit. <laughs> World Sad peace, now. man. We got this. We got this. All right. Let's do it. All right. Uh, oh, so this is a national. <laughs> yeah. So to huh. learn about dark energy and, like we said, to learn about supernova, we needed to collect thousands and thousands of observations, apply techniques on the data, number crunching, things like that. And those kinds of techniques are used in various science research communities, but now they're also applied to basically everything. When you watch Netflix and you get a recommendation, or you go to Amazon and it says, people also bought this, who bought this, those are all similar kinds of algorithms crunching huge amounts of data. So that's where this connection comes from, where I'm now applying skills that I learned as an astrophysicist to TV ratings. Oh, so and that's so. your job? You fucking track what I look on the internet? No, yeah. I track what you watch on TV. Look, see, he's got sneakers. Oh, yeah. TV's oh. fine. You can do that. Okay, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> so we will switch gears to some TV rating stuff. Okay. Uh, so what fraction of U.S. households tuned in to the season seven Game of Thrones finale, and for at least five minutes. All right, we have. A I guess. hope your answer becomes so much smarter. For this okay, <laughs> I'm gonna get really smart. <laughs> is it about three percent? No, it is not. Okay. No. All right, we have another no. answer. Okay, in fraction form, <laughs> like three out of five. Nope. No. Nope. Um, one third. Nope. Six nope. out of ten. Nope. Nope. Thirty. But I'm glad we're all guessing numbers. One eighth. One eighth. One eighth. One eighth. One million. Just, just in case you didn't. One million is a big. <coughs> one million is a big fraction. Just in case you didn't sure. hear, she said three fifths, and then he said sixty percent. I, I was trying to goes, that slide, And then she goes, "That is a one three fifths, babe." <laughs> three tenths. <laughs> it was like here twelve twenty. Three three tenths. Three tenths. Nope. All right, hold on. We have an answer down here. One twentieth. One twentieth is the closest we've had so far. Okay. I suppose. Do we all know what that is in percent form? It's five. That would be five yeah. percent. Five percent. One in forty. What is that in percent form? Yeah. Two point five. Yeah. No, nope, that's further. Colder. Further colder. colder. <laughs> Point seven out of ten. You just blew my mind. That's a fraction and. It's a point of a, of a... I meant 7%, sorry. Oh, seven. You should be so embarrassed. I'll take it. Within our we'll take it. Eureka. Okay. All right, Eureka. Come, Come on, on down. Down. I like we're mixing up right. fractions, percentages. I we're just know. trying we... to keep things interesting, yeah, keep you know, it fresh. With, you know, improper fractions, fractions, percents. It's great. They're fresh all great. Pieces of the pie. All right, do you watch... Uh, well, first, what's your name? Christine. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Uh, all right, very nice. Do you have any favorite characters? Lady in red. <laughs> Lady in red. Red uh, is woman. dancing. Red woman. Say. Woman. Oh, you do. Yeah, I like Mr. Sun, Moon, and Stars. To be like, yeah. Okay, but you do, you do, do you, you do love Daenerys. Yes. Oh, well, just amazingly enough, <laughs> we have for you a little Daenerys. Oh, oh, wow. Look at this. Woo. Could go on your desk, your table at home. Sleep with it, whatever you feel comfortable with. I sleep with her tonight. She's fine. Okay, good. Give a round of applause. Good job. So here is actual data from uh, my company, uh, the company I work for, Samba TV. Uh, so this is minutes of the episode, a graph of the minutes of the episode, and then the fraction of U.S. households each uh, second. 
And so if you look at that, you know. Okay, wait one more time. Mm -hmm. One more time. Go the x and y axis one more time. So the the horizontal, the x axis here is minutes into the episode. Okay. And then the vertical, the y axis is the fraction of okay. U.S. households. So it okay. sort of peaks at only four percent, zero point zero four. Uh huh. But some people tune in and leave. Some people watch towards the end. I don't know why you would watch just part of this episode, but Crazy. when you do the numbers and you look into this. Uh, the total of individual households is about 9% of the U.S. households tune in for at least five minutes. No, notice how when she sleeps with her nephew that it dips a little <laughs> bit. Well, they don't know that Is that, that a dip yet. or a spike? <laughs> I think that's a dip. It's a dip. There are so, spoilers so tonight, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so at, uh, what is it? So uh, about 1% uh, of U.S. households watch the whole episode? Or? Uh, at... Uh, that would be the most, uh, yeah, because that's kind of the lowest that it dips down to. Okay. But if some people yeah. were there, some people were otherwise, okay. it could be lower. So I haven't actually Who? calculated that, but that's another thing that we could look at. Who here, you know, on a Sunday night goes starts or starts thinking, ooh, I can't wait to watch two minutes of Game of Thrones tonight? <laughs> Does anyone do that? Did you really? I got to get at least a minute in before I go to bed. <laughs> oh my God. Does anyone here, though, who here, make a round of applause if you watch Game of Thrones, first of all? All right. It's like 60%. Make, it, uh, give, make some noise if you don't ever watch the full episode. Okay. <laughs> no one. You don't watch it at all? So, so, uh, you should probably you, leave this. Do you have a life or something? So, <laughs> Too much. Let's talk, about, let's talk about the relevancy of this data. Uh, why is it relevant to know about how many people tuned in for just five minutes? Uh, yeah. The, mm -hmm. So the, the five minute uh, thing actually comes from Nielsen. And so Nielsen is the big ratings company. They're one of our competitors. They've been around for a very long time. Uh, we do things differently than them. We think better than them in a lot of ways. Uh, but one very of the humble. things, humble one of the things that Nielsen yeah. does, because they were the first, per, you know, the first group around to measure tune in originally to radio programs of all things, mm -hmm. Uh, is they have these sort of definitions, and they consider you a viewer of a show if you've watched five minutes of it. So if you watch some crappy show for five minutes, yeah. or you leave the show yeah. on from the previous show for five minutes, <clears throat> yeah. you count as a viewer. Yeah, so yeah. all these ratings are horribly inflated and don't yeah. make sense. Wow. Exactly. Weird cuts. What, what about this new <laughs> age of, of view? Are you guys trying to pursue like new nomenclature, your own words, your own categories, viewerships, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so one of the things we're doing at Samba is trying to develop you know, numbers and metrics and things we can measure in the TV data that make sense yep. in the 21st century with how people watch TV, how TV is served. Uh, and not kind of just, well, we picked five minutes because it was arbitrary 70 years ago. Yeah. The thing is, Nielsen's been around for so long, all the networks, all the TV people, they're used to the Nielsen the ratings. ratings. Yeah. So we kind of have to speak that language, but then convince them, ah, but these numbers that we have that are different are better, better. and here's why. Yeah. And so that's kind of this push Correct. and pull that we have at Samba. Yep. And so then what, uh, furthermore, at, uh, what does, what do, what does an, or, uh, an organization like Game of Thrones, what do they want to learn from this number? And how can they, what, are, what better can they do? Yeah, so, the, so for you know, shows on HBO, there's not commercials during it. A lot of the companies and networks that we work with, they want to know how many people are watching the show because they sell commercial time during the show. And they can say, well, if you know, Toyota wants to show a commercial during this episode of Big Bang Theory, we know you're going to have this many people watching your commercial, and that's important. For something like HBO, Game of Thrones, it's a little bit different because there's not commercials during the show, but HBO still wants to know how many people are tuning in. Uh, how many people are tuning in on the app versus Correct. DVR versus yeah. live? That's yeah, another yeah. thing. Versus that stealing. <laughs> versus yeah. yes, we, true. We, the, one of our dirty little secrets is we know there's probably like you know a percent of the world that's just pirating the shit and torrenting everything, and we're like we're never gonna figure out who that is. So oh well. Is that dark matter? <laughs> <laughs> or does that dark matter? Whoa! Oh, wow! Pass, pass the blunt. You guys what? didn't answer my question. <laughs> it's getting deep in here. Do you, but do you know for this specifically what these dips are? It'd be uh, amazing if it is the, the incest scene. No, because yeah. that doesn't happen till about like a like the end, like the before it dips again. People probably saw it and they were like boring, and then they <laughs> and then they got out. Do you tell them, hey, this is the part where? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So uh, for for this one, I haven't looked into <laughs> it, but a couple of people who I've showed this to in the office have said that there are. Uh, important plot points that happen at those moments. So maybe people are pausing and tweeting or uh, going oh. online, doing other stuff, and that will sort of drop them out for a while. Maybe they completely stop and come back to it later. 
Um, but uh, to get more to your point of... Like, ooh, uh, uh, blue ice fire. That's bullshit. Yeah. And they pause yeah, the... Right. I, I'm still trying to figure out what the yeah. hell that is. Yeah, what is Wait, that about? Wait, what? It's, fi- it's hot. It's blue fire. It's normal. <laughs> Don't worry. We have it's chains to get the dragon out. We brought everything from Home Depot. <laughs> blue, blue fire is hotter, though, than yeah, regular fire. That is correct. Fire. That, is, that is an astronomy yeah. thing. There you go. Oh, it makes perfect it. sense. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, th- maybe they're just poking, you know, the holes in the plot. Yeah, very possible. Uh, one thing that's similar to this, uh, we can look at second by second or minute by minute if people tune away because let's say they're watching a late night host and they disagree with the joke that they just made. Yeah, exactly. Jimmy. And that's something that we're looking into uh, for Jimmy's a good man. companies. Yeah. So th- okay. that, that's where I was kind of going with like, what could they do better? For example, you show this, this data to HBO or to Game of Thrones producers or whatever, and then you say, at these specific points, you lost viewership, and then they better understand how to potentially make the story arcs better. Yeah, and you know another thing, uh, if you look up, you can go on the Game of Thrones Wikipedia page, and at the bottom they have the Nielsen official rating for every episode. Our number is pretty close, but it's not quite the same. Uh, but they basically give one number, whereas here you get you know over time you see that you yeah, maybe yeah. had a lot of people at the beginning and it tails off a little bit. How many people stay through the whole thing? Where are these dips? Those are the kind of information that yeah HBO wants to know, Game of Thrones might want to know. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Wait, what does this have to do with stars? <laughs> Besides the blue ice fire thing, which we remember, got this job pays more. <laughs> there, that's it's way more stable. Yeah, it pays yeah. more. Uh, the dark matter <laughs> did you in his watch? wallet. Yeah. <laughs> Phil. Did you watch GOT with a naked eye? That's. What I, I definitely know. did. Okay, I definitely cool. did. Yes. Okay. No, but seriously though. How the uh, fuck did she get back to them? Oh, never mind. That's a different. <laughs> um, she got there so fast. Uh, everyone thrill. travels very quickly. That's that's what I figured out. Faster than the speed of life. Bit. I it was just sure running to, to the wall. <laughs> All right, and my uh, and and uh, yeah, I know. That was like a probably ten minute, like you know. When probably should have asked this when we started talking about this. But how are you measuring that? So yeah, I figured that would be a question that comes yeah. up. Uh, so uh, uh, Samba TV has uh, chips, microchips that are inside certain brands of smart TVs. When you set it up, one of the options is: Do you want to opt in to use Samba TV, and you get you know some cool apps when you do that? And part of that agreement is we try to figure out what you're watching, so anything that's on the screen. And so we can try to figure out if you're watching live TV, DVR, if you're using Netflix app on your smart TV, things like that. Um, We actually don't even take the image on your screen. We take subsets of it and then try to look it up in basically a big database of shows. So if you're watching a home movie, we don't know what it is, we throw it away. Yeah, and then then furthermore, what about um, uh, Nielsen? How did Nielsen, like 70 years ago, how did they how did they tap into knowing numbers? So from what I know, Nielsen has you know, lots of trade secrets that they don't talk about, but the basic idea is that most of them have sort of like another cable box, and it can figure out what's coming through your cable box, which means that they aren't very good at DVR if you've recorded something and watch it again. If you watch anything not through your cable box, Nielsen has no idea what you're, what you're watching. But they don't have a chip in cable boxes? Uh, I believe they have a separate box that goes through so, the cable okay. box, but okay. I'm not 100%. So is that right. why there's so many NCISs? They definitely skew the demographics of who's watching yeah. still on cable, right? They try to correct for it, but we think that they're not correcting it well enough. It's like there's a New Orleans one? Get the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's like a couple, right? <laughs> Just New Orleans. All right. All right. All right. Uh, what was the highest rated moment of the Oscars this past February? Uh, okay, hold on. We have highest rate. Now, how do you define a moment? Uh, so, the you know two-ish minute period where there were the most TVs tuned to the Oscars okay. when they called out Moonlight, but it, or when they called out uh, La La Land, but it was actually Moonlight. Incorrect. Oh. Was it the m- moment after that? It was not the moment after that. I was going to say when Sean Spicer came on stage, but that was a different award show. Yeah, different I just show. <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> fucked up. Other no, answers. All right. Okay. The like very beginning, the first minute. Good guess. Yeah. That was one of the highest ones, but not the highest one. Uh, Did anybody? Miley Cyrus sing a song? <laughs> Make some noise if you watch the Oscars this year. Okay, so <laughs> those are the people who can possibly answer this. Was it when they got the tourists inside? So that was, I think, the second or third oh. highest one when, uh, yeah, they brought in the busload of tourists. That was, that was a pretty uh, big one, but that is not the biggest one. Who was the host? I don't, uh, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't even, yeah, I don't watch. It was Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, yeah, Kimmel. okay. Right. 
Uh, this this one is really hard. I was surprised that this was the answer. So, all right. Uh, it is a, it's a specific award. I'll it's tell you that. Okay, one of the awards. it's an award. Not best actor. Not best picture. Raise your hand so we can get a someone can win something. Uh, You're close. close. Okay. Yeah. Nope. No. Nope. Music. Close. Stars. In memoram. <laughs> what animation? We'll give it to one of the music ones. Okay. We what, move on. Best song. Best song. Best song. That's Best it. All right. Song. And what what song was that? Uh, the song, if we go to the next slide, was uh, "City of Stars" from La La Land. That oh. was. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is this is what we got. So, you know, we've we've done these for. I don't think we did one for the Emmys recently, but we've done it for the Oscars. Uh, we've done it for big sporting events. We'll probably do it for a couple of the World Series games. We've done it for the um, uh, Super Bowl, things like that. And yeah, you know, fun things that that we'll put out on our blog and and. Other kinds and of is there anything that's stuff. like very counterintuitive or shocking? You know, I mean, certainly best sound editing. That's a that's a shock. Yeah, um, certainly that one is weird. The you know this very fine grained sort of looking every few minutes how many TVs are in. Nobody's really doing. We're one of the few companies that can do this. And yeah, we see weird stuff, and it's unclear. It's you know right before or after a commercial break, or maybe people think it's going to be interesting. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting questions that you know we'll find this data. We'll pass it along to some of our business and salespeople, and they can, you know, spin it. Oh, they'll spin it. it. Do they? Do they yeah. really? Do they give advice? Like, hey, you need to have... Uh, but you don't give it to them, right? They have to buy it. So I give it to the... Art not, not you sales. in particular, but... <laughs> but yes, he sells will, it to fellow employees. We will employees. sell these insights uh, to, to the companies, to the networks, to shows, etc. So you're specifically, you're giving the data to the salespeople, and the salespeople are packaging it in specific ways so that the people at the Oscars would want to buy it, or the people at the Super Bowl would want to buy it. Yeah, and we try to work closely with, with our sales folks to you know, put together, you know, they can put together yep. the graphics and the spin, we, put, yep. we have design uh, people that put together graphics, and we do you know, sort of the back end, calculate the numbers, make some of the plots. Are you allowed to reveal how much you charge for some of this information? I am definitely not allowed to reveal <laughs> that. Reveal that. <laughs> I got like 20 bucks in my pocket. Maybe well, you got, this, you got this for got free this on the block, on. so. <laughs> I need Ken Hub Kevin's Pornhub watching statistics. Yeah, I can give you that personally, trust me. <laughs> um, okay, so one, one more thing about this is um, when you how do you even know, because if you're going to invest time into packaging up the data and trying to sell it to people, um, and, but it's the first push for them, it's not like the second time or third time they're buying it, how often are you like, hey, we don't care about that data? It's probably like not that often, right? They want to buy it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're pretty unique in the space. You know, like I said, Nielsen is a competitor. There are other companies that are trying to do this. We think we're doing it the best. We have a lot of longstanding good relationships with uh, content producers, people that make the shows, networks, and advertisers, people who buy commercial time. And, you know, we have some pretty big partners that you can look up online, A&E, Disney, our Cuban is an investor. Uh, fairly big names that, you know, give us some credibility when we go to other new client, possible clients and say, hey, we've got this data, we think it's useful, these other people say it's useful, here's what you might be able to do with it. And then we've had a lot of the newer stuff that we've developed over the last year or two has been specifically requests from clients where we give sort of a standard report and they're like, oh, that's great, but we'd really like to see this because nobody could tell us this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the salespeople kick it back to the data science team and we look mm -hmm. into it and say, I think we can pull these numbers. We can calculate the stuff that they want that nobody else can do. Good. Then, because that's obviously big. Those are big name clients and uh, and partners, and mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. So I can ask you to give me specifics into certain areas. Th is there another competitor that's not Nielsen? Uh, there are a couple out there that are trying to put together, uh, you know, where commercials air, how many people are watching these kinds of things. Uh, they're. A little, they're, most of them are, are smaller and a little bit newer. We've been around for about seven or eight years now. Um, so we have sort of a leg up yep. on that. Uh, and like I said, these, these relationships with the, the networks and with the advertisers is really where uh, we have a lot of stability and growth, hopefully, going forward. I like how you went from studying stars to studying stars. There you go. That's <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> have you been <laughs> stewing really with that one for like the last three minutes? No. Like, oh, no. like, drop this one. He was like, I, I got this. I got that's this. my closer, <laughs> for Christ's sakes, I'm leaving. Uh, all right. Last question. All right, last one. So, uh, as of mid 2017, what fraction of U.S. households was not paying for cable TV or satellite TV? I'm a part of that percentage. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I am too. Am I? This is obviously a very different answer for people that are 20 to 30. Who's in got the Bay yes, Area? It's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the Bay Area. <laughs> Make some noise if you got cable. Okay. Okay. I think that's like three people. Three people. All right. So this is not a representative sample no. of the U.S. Of the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We. Oh. Okay. So we at least know some of the people not. Wait, paying cheer for cable. if you have Hulu, HBO, and Netflix. Ten percent. Yeah, we s we're discussing. Uh, not not ten percent. Not ten. Huh? No. Sixty-five percent. Sixty-five. Not sixty-five percent. Which one's closer, ten or sixty-five? Ten is closer. Twenty. Eureka! Oh, shit. Oh, look at that. Eureka! Oh. Here we go. <laughs> Come on down. Are you DVRing the game right now? I know. All right. You want to give your name to the audience? Alexa. Okay. And, and so you don't have cable? No. What do you have? Hulu or? Netflix. Netflix. And th that satiates you? That's all you need? Yeah, it's just Netflix. Do you, okay. What about Game of Thrones? Do you watch it? Thanks so much for coming to the okay, show. Okay, thank you. It's time to go. <laughs> we only have Game of Thrones prizes for now. Actually, what we do have for you is Cancel Cable, How Internet Pirates Get Free Stuff. <laughs> this is a guide to stealing everything. So you can watch Game of Thrones without having the need to sign up for HBO. Oh. Round of applause. <laughs> Tor Network. Tor Network. Okay. Uh, on, on, officially, on behalf of Samba TV, I cannot condone that book. All right. I think the legal team is okay with that now. Oh, drunk uncle. Stealing I love cable. you so much. 25%. Uh, yeah, so, you know, there have been a few reports from us and, and other groups, Nielsen, et cetera, who, yeah, have claimed that sort of 20 to 25% of people are not paying for, for cable or satellite anymore. Uh, obviously, in the Bay Area and in, in big urban centers and tech hubs, that number is a lot higher. Younger demographics, that number is a lot higher. But there's still a hell of a lot of people in the U.S. that pay for cable every month, watch TV live, don't even use a DVR to record stuff. They just sit down, 8 o'clock, watch the show. That's that. Stone Age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is bizarre to think about, but that, that is a is large so fraction sad. of the country. Yeah, it's, it's for sure. It's Whatever a lot of people. is on and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> NCIS, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> NCIS. I want to hear about how I can buy this new strainer. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's my dad. So hey, was it was it uh, percentage out of uh, 300 million out of the total people? Uh, it, so it's a uh, number of households in the U.S. Uh, as okay. a percentage of number of households in the U.S., which is uh, so like God, that's it, 100 million? Yeah, 110 million is the number that people throw around, I believe. Okay. But the Bay Area must throw off your shit all... You got like 20 people in a house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that is another thing that actually we are going to try to, to tackle oh yeah, at some point. point. Is yeah. we, because we're in the TV, it's, you know, if it's two parents, two kids, that's they might four. be watching. Yeah, that's four people that's four, with yeah. very different viewing habits. Mm. So we might say, well, they're watching two hours of SpongeBob and two hours of Game of Thrones. Maybe that's the dad high really, you know, every night. Sure. But uh -huh. it could also be the kids. We're seven, so trying to seven millennials. <laughs> Yeah, right. A college dorm that has like, you know, 20, 20 people in it. Like, that's going to be very weird watching habits. How do you figure out if it's four or if it's an awesome... Because, for example, the viewing parties for, uh, for, for fights like UFC fights mm -hmm. or super, that kind of stuff. I mean, you're crowding 50 people around a TV sometime, so... So, uh, one way to do this, uh, especially for, you know, TVs and bars, for example, where they're just... Or airports where it's on yeah. all the time. Uh, we can sort of see those as outliers. You know, a TV that's on for 16 straight hours yeah. from like noon to four in the morning, that's probably a bar. Yeah. Uh, and they kind of stick out and they have some other weird, weird data that we can then kind of throw yeah. out because, you know, people aren't really paying attention. Advertised TV people really don't care about those people. Um, are you really? So, so if it's just noon to f 4 a.m., you're like, that must be a bar or a very sad person. Let's ignore them. Yeah, somebody leaving their cat at home yeah. perhaps all day long watching okay. TV. <laughs> so so th are you exploring the angle of using the front-facing camera on smart televisions to observe Break eyes? Break out the blue tape. So we are not because that's terrifying and creepy <laughs> and an invasion of privacy. So we are definitely not doing that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, Does anyone else like put blue tape over that. the fucking camera on their MacBook? Oh, yeah. yeah, fuck no. that. Y'all can hear what I'm doing, but you can't look at me while I do uh, it. Uh, right. uh, no. Got to pay extra for that. <laughs> the audio book of Joseph Anderlin's life. <laughs> I want them to see. You know. 
<laughs> yeah, no exactly. Sound, perhaps. I don't care. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, you mentioned that obviously the percentages are just much, much uh, uh, lower for people that are in the age of uh, uh, 20 to 30. Uh, we probably own... Five five percent was probably uh, subscribed to cable services. Twenty to thirty year olds. Um, is there a specific reason why you think that? Where like where television's going, and what do you think about the uh, the demographics that are watching TV right now, and who's going to be dropping off? Where is it all going? Yeah, I mean, this is something that you know concerns our company, TV network shows, everybody. Like you know, it's still a huge business advertising on TV. It's you know ten billions, tens of billions of dollar industry. Um, you know, and I think most people, including myself, realize that things are changing. People aren't watching cable, even though 20, 25% is, you know, 75% of people still have it. But, you know, a large chunk is it's moving that direction, certainly, that people are not getting cable subscriptions or getting really low cable subscriptions and adding Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, stuff like that. Uh, and so I think, you know, realizing that that's the way it's going, but people are still watching TV. Millions of people are still tuning in, whether it's through the HBO app or cable or on their laptop so to watch 75 Game of Thrones. Seventy-five million households in the U.S. are still watching. Uh, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Are, are still okay. paying for cable, and even on top of that, people are paying for these other things to watch the shows. Yeah. It's not like people are not watching the shows. People are watching just as much, if not more, than ever before. It's just in different ways, and so yep. you know the yep. ability to track and figure out who's watching in which way is what the networks want to know, the showmakers want to know, yeah. the advertisers want to know. And that's really where you know Samba is trying to, it, and has been doing a good job of trying to figure out with, all of these things. With mostly TV. So we, we are in the TVs, that's what we are, are yeah. trying to figure out on. So and that works with HBO, and it <laughs> works also with Netflix when it's watched on that smart TV? Yep, yeah, so okay. if, you, if you use a, a Roku or a Chromecast or an Apple TV and you're watching it on your TV screen, yeah, yeah. then that's fine. You're okay. It's when you're watching it through a projector or on your phone, tablet, laptop, laptop, that we don't, don't know what's it. going on. Through a projector. Yeah. So you guys, will, you guys will live for a while longer because of the apps that are on the televisions. Okay, this is hypo hypothesizing that tele the cable television slowly goes away and we start using tablets and computers and whatever more often um, because of because there are Netflix apps and Hulu apps and uh, all HBO apps on the actual s televisions that you have chips who are your manufacturer partners like I Samsung am not allowed to say that okay we are in, we are in many companies you have heard of yeah okay so you, you, and you secretly slip these chips in no, we have well, the, the permissions that come what? at the beginning. They can say yes yeah. or no. So oh. we, have, we have contracts but, with but the But do they know oh, by clicking consent. on this button that, that that's what they're getting, or is it in the fine print? It says that, you know, by checking this box, you allow Samba TV to, uh, you are sending information about what you're watching to Samba TV. In return, you get to use these apps. All right. Do you think there's going to be a point where advertisers just go through the television like you guys did, and then they just stream little ticker things of advertisements since everyone's going to this like you said, this 20% isn't going through, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so no, this is definitely something that people have <laughs> talked Ladder. about because... Like finishing thoughts here. You know, the, the, <laughs> standard, my the standard model of, of TV commercials is, you know, I think 18 to 35-year-old white males watch this show, I'm going to advertise to that. That's a pretty big, broad demographic. Yeah. With uh, internet advertising, you know, Facebook, Google ads, that kind of stuff, they know exactly what you're interested in. They can serve directly to you as an individual. They are failing miserably. <laughs> that, that they get is the same fucking true. commercial on YouTube, like, dude, I don't speak Spanish. Like, why does this <laughs> keep coming up, man? <laughs> and so, yeah, what we're trying to do is somewhere in the middle where it's a little bit more uh, specific, but not down to the individual. And people have talked about maybe one day, you know, it'll just be like, yeah, an internet ad on your TV. It'll be just like, you know, hey, Kevin, here, don't you want this thing that you were looking at on your laptop two days ago? Facebook like, does yeah. that shit all the fucking time. That's right. Like, dude, I already bought right. that sweater. Like, <laughs> yeah. why are you yeah, advertising maybe. the sweater again? I'm not going to buy a second two, one. though, to be honest. It's pretty, it's pretty fleek. <laughs> 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 I enjoy the sweater, but it's just weird, like... Right, you already bought it. Like, thanks, Google Chrome. Up. Like, <laughs> so, so just just to summarize your, or you, why don't you go ahead and say your maybe these last thoughts about sort of the direction of viewership? What do you think? Or where do you think it's going? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think people are still going to watch TV. They're going to want to see shows, whether that's on ABC or HBO or Hulu or Netflix. I think that's certainly changing with time. Yeah. Um, but people are still tuning in. They're still watching TV. Uh, 
the TV screen is still the biggest screen in the vast majority of houses. So even if you don't pay for cable, still people, a lot of people have a big TV that they then hook up a Roku to, yeah, definitely. or they cast from their laptop or definitely. something like that. Yep. Uh, so you know, as far as Samba being in TVs, we, we're comfortable, we like that. Um, but I think, like I was saying, you know, the way that people are, are watching it is changing. And you know, we're in this bubble, and you know, younger people and people in, in techie areas are spending a lot more time watching Netflix, Hulu, app-based TV. And I think that's only going to continue in the foreseeable future. And so if you want to figure out who, how many people are watching these shows, who's watching the commercials that companies are spending a lot of money for on, you know, not Hulu Prime, regular Hulu, et cetera, uh, you know, you need a company like, uh, that, like Samba that can try and actually track this as it changes. Because companies like Netflix already have, I believe, 100 million subscribers across the world. Something, um, something ridiculous like that. And so because of that, then they have whole data science teams themselves then observing uh, all these analytics about the viewers and how they can make their systems better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they kind of have their own, comp they're a comp competitor in that sense to you, but they're only watching Netflix. That's exactly right. Um, and then the, uh, maybe the last question would be more, a little more technical is what, what, are, what exactly are you guys looking at from the, uh, from the smart ship that's inside of the televisions? Like what, how does that data come to you? How do you analyze that data? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in, in essence what we're doing is we're applying some kind of mathematical equation to some of the pixels on the screen. We're not grabbing all of them, we're not taking like a screenshot JPEG. We're applying a function, some math, to some of the pixels, and that's what gets sent to us. So the numbers we see out of your TV is just gibberish. So I can't reconstruct what image was on your screen. We then look up those random numbers in our database of random numbers, and if it matches, we say, great, you're watching this minute of the Oscars at this time. If it doesn't match anything because it's a home movie or you know, your really old DVDs of Mr. Ed that we don't have in our database, then we just throw it away. We say, we don't know what that TV's watching. Bummer. Yeah, that's what you're not able to see. Hey, hey, hey. We also do not track adult content. Yes. So, so you're, uh, wait, you're, 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 that's you're, too easy. You're, what? you're saying you have a, a massive database of algorithms that you then see if that is what's being watched on the screen. So you have an algorithm for uh, Game of Thrones characters. It's not quite then, that specific. It's a little bit more general of we have an algorithm that spits out some random number. We look it up in our big dictionary and we can then say, ah, it's this frame of this scene of this episode. And then we think you're on that show. And then we kind of keep going with time. Okay, so you take the frames of the shows that you think people will watch, and then those are then your algorithms that you're trying to see if the people are watching those. Yeah, basically we have uh, these capture stations all over the US where we're effectively recording a bunch of networks, TVs, yeah. TV all the time. And so we have that database sitting there, and then random TVs out there with the Samba chips in it can send us their gibberish uh, fingerprints, as we call them. And we look them up in the same database. If they match, great. We say, you're watching the show. Uh -huh. If not, we throw it away. You're, you're, uh -huh, you're watching the show, and then what? And then you, that's a random household. That's not, there's no identifier. It's a random right. one. And then you're able to say that uh, 20 million households were tuning in, or, or 5 million or whatever, were tuning into this frame, and then that is how you package the data and s say it, tell it, sell it. To yeah, so okay. that's one of the main ways that we do that. We then say, okay, how many households did we say watched this bit of Game of Thrones? And that's how we get those numbers. And then we can try to slice it up and connect it with other data to say, you know, well, we think that this TV is probably in this neighborhood because they're watching this local affiliate or they're connected uh -huh. to this uh, tower or something like that. And then we can say, okay, well, maybe they're from the Bay Area, and we can kind of mm. bump it up that way. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of pushing the boundary of what we can you do right do, now, yeah. but that's where we're looking to go. Cool. Right. So you, you live some... in the land of quantification. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we have actually a bonus question. Bonus for you. question time. Bonus, bonus. Here we go. If you could quantify a year of your life and analyze that data, what might be the most alarming data point? <laughs> Be honest. Uh, I definitely, since working at Samba TV, the uh, sheer amount of time I've spent watching commercials has skyrocketed because I spend a lot of time at work trying to figure out, like, oh, we don't know what commercial they're watching. I guess I'll watch this 30 second Pantene ad uh -huh. and I have to, like, watch it frame by frame and be like, oh, that was the frame the algorithm messed up. And I have to do that like hundreds of times sometimes. <laughs> and then I want to go jump out the six-story window. Does that make you Fuck, cry? you got to watch commercials to figure out an algorithm for the commercial. That's fucking bullshit. Yeah. 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 We, have, 
We, we fixed it since then, but occasionally I have to do that. You could people. possibly survive six stories. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, give it a shot. Are you just trying to encourage him to make the leap? That's good to know. Sounds like a dare. <laughs> That's, uh, Planned I think you can make and it. suicide. <laughs> We've got it all, folks. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we'll leave it on that. Let's give yep. a big round of applause for Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. And for Joseph and Emily. Oh. Hilarious. Yeah, very Comedic fun, For all of you, our wonderful, wonderful audience.